we went and did this kind of, uh, convention, and then we actually kind of made it a work. I made it a work-related trip too. They invited us to the art department, so I brought my pencil of the um, the Klingon bird of prey. And instead of you know snail mail, fax mail, these changes, I sat down with um, those guys. Um, I think Mike Akuda was um, spoke up the most, really. Um, here's 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 my thoughts. Here, change this, change that. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you guys, um, you've been doing your bird of prey uh, analysis, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you asked, you know, what's it like working with these guys? No, I think they're all nice people, absolutely, and um, we, we're very professional, and sometimes um, Mike and I would, I would write a, pretty much a letter that my publisher would send on to Mike about, here's how I think this should be, after he's told me to do it in a different way, mm -hmm. just to make sure that this is the way he really wants it to go. And, and I remember him um, telling me, uh, so you'll laugh at this probably, and it, it's, it's just a funny story, but um, I drew that cutaway solely with the reference from The Voyage Home. Nice. <laughs> okay? Because that's all we really had of up-close stuff. And I thought, oh, I mean, how could I go wrong with this? Yeah. But at the end of the day at Paramount, we're sitting in the art department. He goes, can you add those two little support pylons in the bridge? <laughs> and I'm like, but they're not there. They're not there. He's actually asking me to add something that's not canon. And this I was my Kakuda? Why, why do you want me to add those little, because they were in the motion picture, right? You know, they're yeah. the, the, the two struts. Yeah. And, and he had a good point. He goes, well... Because people are going to want to see those there. People might associate the bridge of a Klingon vessel more if you put those in. So the fact that there's now a plethora of, and I didn't realize it at the time, of bird of praise, um, you know, all's good. You know, had I put the whales in the back <laughs> of that, there probably would have been real contention. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> Was no, there room for the whales? That's my question. There is. You know, I think there was. It depends. You know, humpbacks are big animals, but they're not the I biggest. Think, as big as people think they are. Would they have been comfortable and could survive? <laughs> well, I always thought, were they, were, uh, what did Scotty do for the air? You know, I mean, was there like a pocket of air they could? Oh, there had to be, yeah. There had to be, you know. Um, of course, it's movie magic, and there's. We can talk about the Jupiter 2 effect all day. Oh my God! <laughs> so, have you guys ever worked on a project together, or is it have you each done your own thing? The e. Enterprise E, and that was really closely with John Eves, correct? Yes, all those guys. Yes, Matt. Matt drew the engines and the secondary hull, uh -huh. and I drew the primary hull. And how was it working together? I know with my mm -hmm. brothers, sometimes it's not very easy um but you guys get along great um i don't remember us having any problems do you matt <laughs> not really actually um, well, this is the time to this is time to vent years later this is the time no yeah. no no <laughs> now that i've had 20 years of psychotherapy i think i can handle these questions <laughs> it's all good we we yeah. got the um like a basic sketch of the e from john i made a foam core model of it well, when was this? When was it being made? I guess that's a good question then, because obviously, when when was that commissioned? Because obviously, you were so far down the line of this you've done year many. Before the year before the movie came out. Okay. Um, so you had all the reference material and knew exactly what the ship looked like before anyone else. Well, had basically. had ILM had ILM done the shots yet? The VFX stuff. No, actually, the uh, first. Uh, it, I'm sorry. The initial stuff that we got um, came in in very small pieces and hunks. We got the drawings from John Eaves. Um, with some sketches, and then ILM, they would shoot pictures of the model in various states of completion that mm. came along, and then and then we started to see more, then we started like, to see, like, shots of the interior from the actual <laughs> filming. So, like, if there's months in between this, so, like, we asked as soon as possible to get something, we got this, um, some ortho sketches from John, I made a foam core model, 
we started photographing saying, oh, what would be a good view for this? And then um, our publisher submitted what we thought was a good view. And then I think a few months later, they had finally finished their miniature and gave us that angle. Um, Chris took that and created a master trace of that. Of the exterior, yeah. And, then, and he actually defined the area um, where we were going to split, um, divvy up the, the work. And I think we had to come up with a few guidelines. Um, if you, one of the pieces of reference we used for the E was the side cut profile that's always used. Um, mm -hmm. You guys have a fancy name for it. Um, but uh, every engineering department has it, right? Every MSD. They get pretty creative in how they want to put those together. And um, it, it uh, helps fuel creativity. So we came up with some guidelines based on that. There's a lot of diagonal structure in the E. Um, and uh, we, we basically said, here's how we're going to do this. Draw them like this. Draw this like this. Um, and then we went our separate ways. And it's actually pretty amazing. I mean, we, we're giving each other feedback as we're going along. Or here's what mine looks like so far. Here's what mine looks like so far. And then mm -hmm. but it was really amazing at the end of the day how um, easily they went together, together, how congruent it looked. I, I have a different um, penciling style than Chris. I think mine was uh, a little lighter in its reproduction. Chris's was a little darker in reproduction. But other than that, um, it I, I didn't, you know, I think it went really yeah. smoothly. I'm sorry. At the time, we only lived a couple hours from each other. I lived in Detroit, mm -hmm. and Matt was in Grand Rapids. So it's not like we didn't see each other as well. Yeah. And I was going to ask, so what, what is this actual time frame for these sorts of processes? Because you're throwing out and, then, and then, then we've got it done, you know, then it's done. But what does that actually take? It took a good year to get it done. Um, I remember the Enterprise D. Um, I had the base drawing done in about a year. And then I probably spent another two months redrawing it. Uh, based upon all the input that I got from uh, from the, the art department guys. Yeah, they can take a, a year, year and a half to do. And that's not including the time that it takes the color artist to do his work as well. No, Bob Kaganich uh, did all the posters except for the Enterprise D, and that was uh, Gary Richardson. So is that is that a year of full-time, that is your exclusive project work? No, uh, that's a year of of us not having a life because we had real jobs mm. and would come home and do this almost completely outside of that. Wow. I kind of had a life. <laughs> well, yeah, Matt had a life. Okay, so and in I'll all honesty, though, what would it take if it was your, if this was your full-time job? Three or four um, months full-time, Matt? Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, um, probably accurate. If you, if you look at, um, I know the artists who do the DK cutaway books, like Star Wars cross sections. Um, Richard and Hans and Kemp, mm. they take about they take about a month per illustration. Yeah. That that's their full time job, though. Although a lot and are smaller. I mean, mo you know, most of it's a lot. Well, more than they are fighters, so they don't they have to are do a billion a little bit rooms. smaller illustrations, but they they have some that they are actually pretty big. Oh. Um, sure. Yeah. It depends on what you're do which which ship they were doing or working on, which... Yeah. Now, I know, Matt, you've done, you've since done a way more detailed version of the TOS Enterprise. It's taking you quite a while. Do um, you want to tell us a little about that? And is, I guess, for both of you after that question, is uh, which, what has been your favorite cutaway mm -hmm. to do back, so far? Back in um, 09, um, I contacted um, CBS about um, the JG Prize. The reason why I, ca I called because, you know, I saw the first movie. I had a lot of trepidation or, or you know. Mm. But um, Chris and I had talked about maybe doing that as, as a group project um, for fun to kind of. We kind of, uh, we did our posters for quite a while. And then I started a business and really had to focus on that. Chris had a career change. And so there's there was this little time away. But we, we, we wanted to keep doing something um 
the cliff note version of this story is um, JJ doesn't want anybody to be involved in any of the information we have on the movie. We can't give you anything, and he doesn't. He's sort of the anti-Lucas. He doesn't mm. like licensed goods per se. He's he's not accommodating, and he was upsetting a lot of the toy manufacturers <clears throat> because they needed this information so they could have their products come out for the movies. Because that's if you're making toys, you want to try to maximize your market and stuff like that. So, does he make great movies? Other, I mean, I don't want to knock J.J. Abrams per se, but I'm just saying that's the philosophy that was per- conveyed to me. And um, so, basically, they were like, "Sorry, not going to happen." But then they followed up with that by saying, "But have you given thought of redoing your old stuff?" Putting a new twist, putting, and I'm like, huh, yeah. And I thought about it, and then the the Haynes manual came out. I think Trek fans were kind of are kind of getting sick and tired of plush toys and pizza cutters. We there's been a quality material, there's been a void in quality material, I think, in in Trek merchandise and things like that. So. I took all those things together and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And um, I started with the engines. It's my favorite part to do anyway. I contacted about about a year or so after doing that. So maybe this is around when I've got, you know, getting together, probably 2012, I contacted um, my friend Gary Kerr. Gary and I had built a relationship when, we st- when I worked on the original poster that you have hanging in your, in your uh, museum there. I said, Gary, I've got all these blueprints you sent me for trials and tribulations. Can I use them? Or are there changes? And he goes, don't use them. They're not accurate. And he goes, I'll send you something, but I'm working on something right now um, with the Smithsonian. I'm like, oh, really? And then right about that time, Chris emails me and says, uh, he gives me a link to an article, Smithsonian article, like a Zach. You need to be involved in this because you're working on it and they don't know you're working on it. Started a relationship with the museum and Gary helped with that because Gary was already involved. And basically, Gary fed me um, (laughs) updates and certain accuracies that I needed to fit. You asked uh, previously how long it takes to do these things. I would say it was about 300 500 hours per draft of these pencil drawings. Wow. Um, this enterprise, um, Stuart, took probably 5,000 hours. So five years to draw in spare time. It sounds ridiculous, but really it was one of those projects where... <laughs> Passion kids, project. Kids go to bed at 8.30 and I'm up till 1 o'clock. Yeah. Gary was a, a primary source, Doug... Um, Andrew Probert, because there's some concepts that Andrew had um, come up with for the original Enterprise that he thought needed to be expressed. And uh, I took Doug's side cut profile that he used for um, Mirror Darkly um, as inspiration for uh, structure and color. Um, But, uh, yeah... The window on the print. Because it's, <laughs> the, it's the been pilot, retconned pilot. back in. No, I mean of, of the of the discovery. It's been retconned back in. So, you know, oh. you missed, you missed the window. Well, no. <laughs> an awful lot of changes would have to be made to the. Uh, to so the, the whole time, if it's what they're saying. Yeah. So, well, you know, big, big it's miss. funny. One thing I've learned about Trek, <laughs> about all this, is that, um, and I've I'm. I've gotten a lot of help. I'm friends with Mark Cushman about this, and he's got production notes for every episode. Um, So if I have a question about something, about an episode, if it was written down, he's got the complete collection that um, Justman and and Roddenberry have put together. They kept, both those men were meticulous at keeping records of everything Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's really kind of silly, but in our case, it's rewarding. Um, what original, what was the original intent of things, you know? And, 
I really try to incorporate that into my um, my my illustration. Um, um, for instance, you know, there's a deleted scene of the Arboretum where they they have a billion candle power lights shining down on it on the Arboretum. I swore to God it was it was they took all those sets outside and they filmed it in the sunlight. But Mark assured me, no, those were <laughs> studio lights. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, why is it so bright? What's above there that's so bright? There's no scene ever filmed in Star Trek so bright. And so I, I took some advantage there on placing the um, Arboretum and Rec. They, they went back and forth between Arboretum and Recreation um, mm -hmm. Facility. Tons of things that were considered based on original intent. I delved in a little bit with the landing struts. Um, mm. those, those little triangles under the saucer were always meant to be landing struts. Um, and when I say landing struts, we should just keep in mind that I'm sure it was only meant to land once. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And, and there's it, a lot of little things you can talk about. And then, you know, there's uh, architecture, structure, um, placement of things that had to be changed. My goal, if I'm going to spend 5,000 hours on this in five years, this has got to be, I've got to answer a lot of questions. And I, I had a lot of input. Very cool. Well, I, I really love the new one. The detail on it's incredible. I would love to get a version of that at some point so. uh, right now um, it's uh, been put into a volume uh, book proposal um, that Gary Kerr and I are doing uh, um, putting a book together for I'm well, looking forward to that for sure so I guess that's one last question for you guys we'll finish off with this one uh, for both of you, do you have any? Do we have any future plans that we can look forward to besides this book that you guys might be working on? Like, oh. there's a new show out there and stuff. I don't know anything. Okay, we we missed we missed answering the one question though before. Oh. You know what? You what's, what's, what's been your favorite right? cutaway? Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll split it up in two parts. <laughs> my 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 baby, that I just you know that's probably my favorite. I'm extremely mm -hmm. proud of the one that you have hanging in your museum. I, I'm, I've got a soft spot for that one. Um, so probably those two. Um, well, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was the Enterprise D. And I'm also in the process of of redoing that as well. Um, oh. In as much uh, detail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, not I'm not. I'm, I'm taking a d different tact in doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm scanning the original artwork minus the, all the text and, um, and I'm just going to, uh, update it to the Sternbach blueprint version. Oh, nice. Um, so it's not going to be as detailed as Matt's. It's going to kind of look, kind of look the same, but more up to date. Um, and hopefully I'll get that out when it's 30 years, uh, old. Um, <laughs> but I'd have to say my favorite was the Enterprise E. Because hmm. at no other point were we as connected uh, to the people that were doing the work hmm. as that one. I mean, we literally were in lockstep with them every step of the way. Um, it was a fun time. It was just an amazing time. And again, going back to that visit at the Paramount lot, it was just... The culmination of all that work um and uh it was it was really 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 great um to do um, was... anyway i think we should wrap this up uh so thank you guys for joining us um and we look forward to maybe speaking with you in the future about specific projects perhaps when we'll we end up, up to fair, little... each each ship probably can we can look at in depth because each one has little easter eggs and, and little stories so mm -hmm. at some point hopefully absolutely so thank you guys for joining us thanks yo and guys, thank you for joining us out there. If you like this video, click like. Don't forget to subscribe. Join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. And uh, just come back and join us for more Trek Yards down the road. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Gorgans. Oh, I'm Matt Cushman. And Chris Cushman.
And Chris Cushman. All right, guys. See you later. Take care. Thanks.